We're going to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum now. You may have heard about the visible spectrum, how white light gets divided up into separate colors. That's a part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but the electromagnetic spectrum is much bigger, much more important. First of all, the, for plain electromagnetic waves propagating through vacuum, that's what we talked about in the last section, state the relationship between the speed, the frequency, and the wavelength. This concept should not be very difficult. Uh, back in chapter 17, I believe it was, we talked about the relationship between the speed of a wave, the frequency of a wave, and the wavelength. Well, the wavelength is just what you think it would be. It's the distance between uh, two similar places on the wave two zero points like that, or two adjacent um, crests, like from here to here. Either way, you get the same distance. That's the wavelength of the wave. The frequency uh, is just uh, the number of cycles per second that are oscillating back and forth. That happens to coincide with the frequency of the source here. So if we're oscillating back and forth at 60 hertz, the, the, the frequency of your regular AC wall outlet, then the wave that will propagate away will also be at 60 hertz. Why? Because this is creating, uh, at 60 times per second, it, it creates both a positive and a negative electric field, as well as magnetic field in the two different directions. So that's wavelength, um, that's frequency, and this is the speed. Um, it looks just like V equals F lambda that we talked about in chapter, I believe, I believe it was 17 or 16. And, um, but in this case, we just call it C. It's the speed of the electromagnetic radiation. So this is a demonstration of some familiar sources of electromagnetic radiation. These are some sources of electromagnetic radiation illustrating that electromagnetic radiation is part of our everyday life. Uh, I've got them ordered from smallest wavelength to approximately the largest wavelength. This is a black light uh, that you use for um, parties. I don't know if they use them anymore these days. We did back in the 70s. Uh, this makes everybody's shirts look kind of cool. That's a source of ultraviolet light, quite a short wavelength light. This is a green laser pointer which produces uh, light of wavelength 500 nanometers approximately, green visible light. Then moving uh, still in the visible spectrum, these two sources produce both visible and infrared radiation. So you can see this light bulb on, but it also produces a fair amount of heat or infrared radiation as does this uh, burner, and, the, and its main job is to produce heat, to, to heat up your, uh, the water. Uh, a radio, uh, AM and FM, two different wavelengths of radio waves, um, and then a cell phone also in the, in the radio range. Your microwave also in that same general um, area with very, very long wavelengths compared with 500 nanometers here, a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of a, of, a, of a millimeter. We're talking about meter wavelengths produced by these devices. State the longest and shortest visible wavelengths. I just think it gives you some power to know what the visible wavelengths are. And once you know them, you can logically back out the other forms of radiation quite easily, as shown here. So the first part of the concept is to, is to state the longest and shortest visible wavelengths. The longest visible wavelength is about 700 nanometers, and that's red. So that's 700 nanometers, uh, the far end of the spectrum. It, it's about, it depends on the person, 740 or whatever, but let's just call it 700 as roughly where we're, uh, the longest wavelength that we can see with our eyes. That's what we mean by visible. The shortest wavelength visible to our eyes is about 400 nanometers, and that's in the violet range, so over here. 
And, and so you might say, okay, so the second part of this concept is to list the six visible colors. And you can subdivide it even more than this if you want, but um, the six visible colors. So what are they? Well, I've got red here, and a color that looks a lot like red is orange. So there's orange, red, orange. Then you can see as you continue across yellow, makes sense, red, orange, yellow. Green comes next, then blue, then uh, sometimes they put in indigo, and then finally violet. Uh, one way that some people remember it is uh, red, orange, yellow, green, B, I, B. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I'm not really worried about indigo, but people say, uh, some people remember it as Roy G. Biv, okay? Um, for me, it's a lot easier just to remember that orange looks like red, blue looks like violet, green's in the middle, and, and yellow's right there by, by orange. That's the easiest for, way for me to remember. Um, then also, I'd like for you just to have the power, just so you know, you, that you know, um, to be able to list the same six main types of electromagnetic radiation. So visible is only one part of the entire spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. And here's how to back out the other ones, this, the other five main categories of radiation. First of all, here we are on the red end of the spectrum. This one is called infrared. It's just uh, outside of the red end of the spectrum. So here we're talking about longer wavelengths. As we're moving to the left, we're moving from very short wavelengths, 10 to the minus 16 meters, up to 10 to the 4 meters, 10,000 meters. So, all right, so infrared is a longer wavelength than red. And then radio is just past the infrared, if you can remember that. Moving the other direction, towards shorter wavelengths. We always start with visible because that's what we're most familiar with. Well, on the short side, the last visible wavelength is violet. And this next one that's right next to it is called ultraviolet, so it's past violet. So infrared is on the one side of red, is on a longer wavelength than red. Ultraviolet is a shorter wavelength than violet. So ultraviolet, these become more and more, uh, the farther and farther you get from visible, you get harder and harder ultraviolet rays, and those are more damaging to your skin. Those uh, coming from the sun and for old, from tanning bed type of devices, you have to be careful about ultraviolet radiation hurting your skin. Uh, even more damaging uh, to your body are x-rays. That's why uh, the amount of x-ray radiation that your body receives, we call it radiation as well as waves, remember, um, that you have to closely monitor how many x-rays you get because that can damage your uh, body tissues. And then uh, the very shortest wavelengths are gamma rays. Those are very dangerous. And uh, most of those are screened by our own atmosphere. And, um, but there are many gamma rays that are produced by uh, X-ray bursts and uh, different astronomical events, uh, uh, supernova explosions, etc. So from largest wavelength to shortest wavelength, we've got radio, then infrared, then uh, visible, then as we're going through visible, remember we're going through red and then through violet, so then ultraviolet be just on the edge of violet, then x-rays and then gamma rays. So those are the six, one, two, th three, four, five, six, down here. 
For which of the following properties do visible light and ultraviolet waves have the same value? We talked about this a little bit before, but it's not the wavelength. The wavelength is different for these different forms of radiation. It's actually not the frequency either. The wavelength changes. The, if you increase the wavelength, then the frequency has to go down. But what stays the same for all of them is the speed. The speed of all these different forms of radiation is the same. And it's one of the most fundamental, beautiful principles that, that I know of. It's just, it's amazing to think about that the, that the x-rays that you take your chest x-ray with travel at the same speed that visible light does and that radio waves do, do coming through the, the, the uh, waves, the air. Uh, the visible spectrum, uh, you can see, uh, you can create a visible spectrum with a prism. We'll talk more about that in a couple of chapters. But you can see the red, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo if you want to count it, and violet. Same thing here in a, in a rainbow, and we'll talk more about those in a couple chapters too. A little harder to see the blue because they're against a blue background. But nevertheless, the same visible spectrum. But we're not restricted to the visible spectrum. As we study objects in the universe, as well as here on Earth, a lot of times x-rays and other wavelengths are useful in trying to understand nature around us. So this is an image. Um, this is the so-called Crab Nebula. Here it is in infrared, invisible, uh, this is actually a um, false color visible image. But in radio waves, it looks very different. In x-rays, you can see the, um, the pulsar, the Crab Nebula pulsar, that's emitting huge amounts of x-rays. So we get different information by looking at, uh, at things at different wavelengths. Which of the following statements most closely describes how humans see objects? Light rays leave the eye, shine on an object, and are reflected back into the eye. Well, that would mean that, light, that the eye is a source of light. Is that true? Uh, well, actually, no. Because you can turn the lights out in this room or any room, and you're, not, as, you're gonna look at somebody else's eyes, and they, you can't see any light coming from them. So they can't possibly be true. Light, our eyes are not sources of light. All objects are sources of visible light, and the eye is sensitive to that light. Well, uh, this glowing screen is a source of visible light, but uh, this pen is not. It can only be seen by light that's reflected from other lights in this room, lights from the screen, lights from uh, overhead, etc., etc. So that's not true either. Not all objects are sources of visible light. All objects are seen when visible light is scattered from them and into the eye. So this object is seen when light is scattered from it. Light from the overhead lights hits this, is scattered from it, comes into my eye, helps me to see this object. But that's not true about the lights overhead here. If, I, if you look at the lights in the room that you're in right now, or at your glowing screen, it's not the scattered light that matters, it's light that's produced by that object. It's a source of light. So some objects are sources of visible light and others are seen when visible light is scattered from them. So that's the one we're looking for. Human eye is sensitive to all types of electromagnetic waves that are emitted from all objects. Well, is it sensitive to radio waves? No, you can't see them. You can only see in the visible range. Consider the region of space that you're occupying. Which of the following types of electromagnetic waves are present around you? Visible light waves. I guarantee, I would imagine that the lights are not off. Or, I mean, if it's a completely dark room, then there wouldn't be any visible light, ray, light waves. What about radio waves? If you stick a, a transistor radio right here, will you hear it? Yeah, sure you will. Uh, so there's radio waves. Microwaves are actually present, um, leaking out from a microwave oven. They're used in radio communications as well. Uh, infrared waves, that's heat. So you get heat, um, actually your body produces some infrared radiation that propagates out because your body is at a particular temperature. We'll talk about that more later. 
And um, so it's, it's actually all of the above. You've got all these propagating around. Um, one use of infrared radiation is for the so-called pyroelectric thermometer. These are the ones that the doctors just stick into your ear and they quickly get a temperature reading. And it looks at the infrared radiation emitted by the, the quantity of infrared radiation emitted by the eardrum and surrounding tissues to determine your body temperature. Very efficient, very quick uh, measurement. Um, 